Hey guys, Nick here. Just heads up, there's some mature language in this episode. Wanted to give you a fair warning. All right, let's get to it. Hey, welcome to Minor Details. I'm Nick. And I'm Reed. And we are two industrial designers in the big city. Sweating the small stuff. That's right. And we're super happy to have Reed Schlegel back on the podcast. Reed Schlegel is our visiting co-host and industrial designer at Arulidin. Arulidin. You know, the interpretation's up for interpretation. I, I was... I was <laughs> the pronunciation's up for interpretation. I was practicing today because I because I remember it's uh, founded by... Uh, what johan aru johan leiden and renat aru right so i always pronounce it aru leiden right right but right. you get a lot of combos in there depends right. on who it is where they're from how they feel that day <laughs> yeah how you been man it's been a while i think you were it's been a couple months since you were last on the pod it has been a few months things are good um started teaching at parsons again few weeks ago i had james in as my guest lecturer extraordinaire for form families and ideation last week very cool and this week's going to be concept sketching okay so how do you put a single idea down on paper think about it a little more broadly and be able to leave it and have people understand it without you even being there um but that's been taking up a ton of my time and then the rest has been work and camping on most weekends and things. oh you've been camping yeah okay uh, a few Just of my upstate friends in new york actually this weekend we went to fire island uh, which I don't everyone know that is. Isn't, wait, isn't that from the documentary? The which, fire documentary? No, that's different. Okay. We did not go with um, what's a job rule to okay. an island. Um, but Fire Island is usually known as it's a very high, it's a very big gay destination. But that's half of the island. The other half of the island is actually a national park and it's all nature preserve. I thought you were going to say that I have a straight. And I'd be no. like, oh, wow, what kind of island is this? No, it's, I mean, the whole island's whatever you want it to be. It's, right, it's right. a high population of, right, right. if, whatever but the one half of the island we are at basically it's completely deserted and we had to hike five miles down the beach and we literally didn't see a single person the whole time we were there i and bet that was beautiful it was awesome it was myself um and then three other Hokies, one of whom is my girlfriend now Hokie is a virginia tech person anyone who okay know i that was already? definitely yeah I was yeah like, what? i realized that's not vernacular that regular people okay. use uh, but it was awesome. We literally hiked into a sand dune and there was a big crater in one and it was just out of the way of the wind from the ocean camp there. And it was great. Woke up at sunrise, had a naked swim because there was not a, literally not a single person. Like you could see was miles. It warm enough? Yeah, it was great. It was perfect. Okay. It was like just that temperature where it's almost too cold, but it's invigorating. Okay. So that was nice. Get your nice morning swim in. Dude, it'll wake you up. I've uh, I've also been following. You finished your Lego castle, and I'm pretty sure last time we had, or last time <laughs> I talked to you on the podcast, we talked about Legos. Yeah, it's been my uh, recurring side project right. as of late. I think this is the last one for a while. I gotta say, this most recent one was amazing. It had like I don't know five stories to it. How how many stories did it have? Yeah, it had like a whole basement, and it had three stories on top of it. I kept doing it and taking it apart and redoing it okay. because I got super type A about this one, and I thought through every room you'd need to have for it to be functional. So it had everything down to like the chamber pot bathroom in the basement <laughs> and like everything you'd need and enough beds you, for every person in it. You put a Lego bathroom into this castle. Yeah, it's a teeny bathroom. <laughs> it was a little chute that went out the side. And yeah, it was pretty fun, but I think I'm going to go back to designing actual things again. Oh, really? Okay. You're, you're bringing it back. Yeah. Um, also, I wanted to ask, I'm not sure if, if you answered this on a previous podcast but i saw a question and i forget who it's from so i apologize how do you organize your legos oh i think we answered this last time but yeah. i'm not sure if i gave a good answer uh muji is oh really muji good. bins that's right Use the clear the stack, muji bins, they're yeah. clear it depends i've gotten into the i don't know what's it called a fall adult fan of lego um that's like the hashtag they have on instagram oh, okay and yeah it's nerdy it's it's in there and yeah i'm, I'm being real vulnerable right now telling you the stuff that i do in my free time i have to look that up that sounds quite interesting because because i know that like the level of lego expertise that you have done with your castle is really it's it's amazing you have like a very textured look to like the tiles and everything um, you can get super crazy on there yeah um 
I, uh, I also, it reminds me of a story when I was a kid, I had a bunch of Legos in my, um, it was Tupperware. It wasn't Muji bin, mm-hmm. but it had the clear base to it. Yeah. And so I would always, cause it was a big bin. Like it was probably as big as I was when I was a kid. So I would just lift it up and mm-hmm. lay on the ground and have it underneath me and search for all the Legos. Cause I could see mm. through the bottom. Smart. Like, like if I needed like a smaller piece. That's awesome. Um, and then sometimes I would just get my sister to dig through. <laughs> I'd be like, Holly, give me a, a two by one brick. Oh man. Like dollar an hour labor. You're like, Hey, I need, I need to get all of the, get the two by one slopes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the inverted slopes actually go put them all back. But yeah. What about you? What have you been doing in your free time? Um, well, I, I, I think maybe the most recent thing is I got the new valve index VR headset. Okay. Um, so that, uh, that's from valve and they reached out and shout out to carl thanks again for sending that and wanted me to try it so i gave it a a good thorough try and man i gotta say this thing is is super high resolution okay it's like i know you have the quest yeah not very high resolution you've tried out the quest this thing is like i don't know 10 times Mm -hmm. as realistic as the quest Really? Yeah. I'll let you try it. I'll I need say. to try that because I tried my old coworker, Adam Wrigley. Um, if you ever check him out on Instagram, he's Spearmint here. He does BattleBots. Right. Uh, but he was the first person I knew who was really into VR. And he would tell me that he had this whole theater and it was like he was sitting in a movie theater watching right. TV shows. Yeah, yeah. And now that's just a feature of Netflix and everything. But Wait, you can do that in Netflix? What do you mean? If you download Netflix, when you watch a show, you're actually in a movie theater. That's the setting that you watch the show. Oh, you're talking Netflix about VR. app in VR. Oh, I have not downloaded the VR app for Netflix. That's like what I use it for is TV mostly. Okay. I thought I was going to use it for Gravity Sketch and things. Yeah. I, I will. It just hasn't gotten there yet. Okay. I just When I come home from work these days, I'm so tired. Right. That... And one thing that's annoying about VR is I like the fact that, like, if my girlfriend is sleeping and I don't want to wake her up with, like, loud noises or bright lights, I thought I can just put the headset on. But if it's too dark, you can't use the headset. It needs to track where you oh, are. Oh, that's interesting. I wish I could just use it in the dark. That's something that's really frustrating about hmm. it. So I end up having to turn the lights on anyway, and it kind of defeats the whole purpose of the whole thing. But, yeah, it's nice. Huh. Yeah, I did. I never realized that. I mean, I, yeah, I that's interesting. Because use it for actual design things. I just go on Amazon Prime and Netflix. <laughs> well, you, you're, oh, you're okay. I thought you were ordering Amazon things in VR. You probably could. You're but watching no, Amazon, Amazon Prime, Prime video. If you go, if you go into their app, it's a whole block world, so you can look. It's like you're in a town, and like there's a whole town moving around you, and that's where you're finding your shows and everything. It's kind of funky. And oh. Fun. I yeah, I have not downloaded any of those apps yet. I should try those out though. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. I I tried out the Valve Index and. Uh, the headset's amazing. I also tried out the controllers that comes with it, and it tracks all of your fingers. Hmm. So as opposed to the traditional VR uh, controllers where you maybe just have buttons or maybe have some sort of like grip movement, um, this one you can like raise your pinky or your forefinger or whatever finger you want. Interesting. Um, can you see your arms or is it just floating hands? Still? Just hands. Just hands. I want them to have the arms in there. The arms are the weirdest get, part. Actually, I think you can. If you attach, like, you can buy separate trackers that go on your elbows and knees and stuff. But that, I want to be one of those dudes with the balls. Like, you see, like, Andy Serkis and all of his movies, like, walking around with yeah. a jumpsuit. <laughs> oh, like like motion tracking. Yeah, like the little um, arms they put on you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you, the VR realm is goes really far and i've just scratched the surface but um yeah i thought that was a fun little update so i don't know if you guys are interested in the valve i'll have to give more of a robust um in-depth review of it later on um but yeah that's all i've been up to robust such a good design word robust like how's your design it's robust (laughs) it's a good it's a good descriptor is it also innovative (laughs) also speaking of robust check out our pins you can get a robust pin yeah it'll never (laughs) fall off um, yeah, if you guys want to support the podcast, buy a little pin, a little asterisk pin. Um, and Reed, you said you didn't have a pin, so here you go. Oh my gosh, thank you. <laughs> I was debating. I I got one of James's bottle openers. Yeah, yeah. You gotta support your friends. And I realized on the bike Did you get right one of my here, bottle openers? Yours, yours is a necklace. <laughs> I need to have a necklace on here. And also, I've I've been much more emotionally connected to his. I've seen it for so long. Yeah, I needed no, to see I, it through. I, I've just met so, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Give me a, give me a link. I'll, I'll buy one. They're sold, out. They're I'm, sold out. I'm too a, late. Oh, <laughs> fine. You don't need my help then. What are you doing? Uh, um, but I wanted to wear it. I thought it was on the bike right here, which is why it didn't happen. I wanted to pull it out and have it like as my big chain and to see how long it took you to notice that I was wearing a giant 
necklace that also could be a bottle opener or could be a piece of gold. I mean, I would obviously notice. You got to do it. Who's you got to show it to someone who doesn't know what James's bottle opener? It's true. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Bu- 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 this is our new segment. <laughs> what news do we have? Uh, well, you know. Apple just released their new lineup for their phones, and mm. I thought I would just put it in here. I know that, uh, well, first of all, I don't want to speak for James, but we all know James would probably just, you know, poo-poo Apple. But uh, uh, I, I I don't know. I guess I'm not as excited as I've been in the past years, and I think it's, I don't know what it is. I think it's just kind of the maturing of technology that we're in nowadays. But, um, you know, I feel like the design uh the design presentation that Apple always gives in September, what used to be like a thing. Like I would hang out with all my friends a couple of years ago and like, we would watch it together. Mm-hmm. Like, or we would talk about it together. And now it's more of like, okay, we all know what's going to happen. We're going to get the new iPhone. It's going to have another camera on it. Yeah. And that's about it. I have a confession to make. Which confession? I've never seen. You've never even. I've seen, never seen one. I mean, I'm sure you've seen clips. Uh, I don't, you've always seen, you've obviously seen Steve up there. I've seen it. I've never seen a Steve jobs. Like, I don't know, presentation on stage. I've seen people watching it, but I've never really cared enough. I'm like, I'll find out from you guys when it's done. Oh man, some of some of the presentations that Steve gave were really amazing. I should go back and rewatch those. I don't really care. I don't really want to watch Tim Cook. That's like watching a dad (laughs) talk. I think if you if you want to go watch some of Steve Jobs' presentations, you should watch more of his like um, like commencement speeches or something like that. Hmm. More more of the motivational stuff. You could watch the iPhone videos, but. Who was your commencement speaker when you graduated from school? Uh, uh, Lancaster? Uh, the guy, Pixar, Pixar guy? Oh, that's pretty cool. What's his name? I don't know. I can't, I recall his name. I'm uh, sorry I put you on the spot like this. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was, he worked on like Toy Story and stuff. That's awesome. Um, I don't know if his name is Lancaster. Oh gosh. Um, but. His name is Buzz Lightyear. And okay. <laughs> it was Buzz Lightyear. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think. You know, we got another iPhone. That's about how I feel right now. I will say that I do really like that new green iPhone Pro glass, frosted glass look. You took the only thing I had to say about it. That's all I had. That's, <laughs> that's my favorite color. That's all I want in life. Yeah. I think we we as designers love that that frosted look. I don't know what it is. I, I think that mm. frosted look is coming back. It's going to be a trend. Frosted's great, except when you have to render it in Keyshot and you get those weird moldy <laughs> splotches everywhere. Right. And it takes like two hours to render. Right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I, I know there was a good, uh, also join the discord guys. We had a good conversation on the discord about Apple's presentation. I know that a lot of people watched it live on the discord and they, and then we had a channel specifically for you guys to chat about it. Um, but yeah, it's a chat room. I don't know. Reed, have you ever joined the discord? When I'm on the podcast. <laughs> Reed's, Reed's on the discord right now. Live. I don't know. I'm like a Luddite when it comes to the internet. I've That's never fine. been on Reddit before. I just That's like fine. don't know this stuff. Listen, it's all good. That's why I do tan paper sketching. I'm still <laughs> like 30 years in the past. Everyone's got their thing and it's all, uh, you know, we actually, we actually have emojis of you on the discord. Of me? I'm not going to show you. You'd probably get mad. <laughs> well, why? What am I doing in them? <laughs> no, no. So there's, there's emojis of everyone. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, there's like funny faces that we'll make and wait is like a bitmoji no it's no they're like emojis like instead of like doing a smiley or a thumbs up you can do like a james squiggly glasses i need to i need to know what my emoji is okay your emoji is search legal and it's a a you and your night costume i'll take that that's fine um and uh and yeah so read i almost fell over (laughs) don't fall over (laughs) this chair sticks to the floor um we were um talking about kind of figuring out what you want to talk about today and so mm-hmm. you had this idea and i i kind of want to i'm interested in hearing it so run it by me yeah so here's my here's my topic this is the first time i came with a topic usually you're like i got some ideas how do you think with this this time i was like all right i've been thinking about this for the last week or two actually probably since i started school but a lot in the last week or two my question is why do designers not solve real problems anymore? We do solve real problems. We talk about James. I mean, we talk, just almost called, I almost called you. It's because you, you think James would be the contrarian, be like, we don't even do it anymore. Ah! No, I mean, I don't. I'm not saying problem. I'm. I, I've learned from the best. You got to be a little provocative when you have a question. Or, but the thing I'm getting at is, I feel like when we were all design students, we spent a quarter of every semester picking a problem. 
half of every semester researching the problem and then a little bit at the end designing it and you spend all this time thinking you're going to graduate from school you're going to save the world you're going to like fix climate change you're going to make all disaster housing perfect you're going to make a laptop for every child in the world you're going to figure out how to make clean water for everyone you're going to get rid of mosquitoes like you're going to do all this stuff and then you get in the real world and everyone is kind of peters off like one by one their dreams die and then they just end up making more shiny stuff that we don't need oh man you're gonna this is a are we gonna fight on this one no no it's it, this is gonna be a hot topic though okay i uh i mean i definitely think that we do have this i i don't know i almost feel like it goes both ways right like there is especially in school and i hear from students all the time there's this idea of hey i want to save the world right mm-hmm I I feel like that's a little naive. Oh yeah. I, I mean but does it does it have to be though? I don't know. I, Are we I, just jaded? <laughs> I mean, personally when I went to school, I certainly wanted to make great products. Mm-hmm. I never really I, and see I have the unpopular opinion like I'm in industrial design because I like creating awesome des- designs and certainly if as they solve they, they should solve problems, but I'm not necessarily in the the mindset of Hey, I'm gonna start like a nonprofit and solve world hunger, mm-hmm. and I think that's great if you can do that. I, I'm just not. That's not what I'm passionate about, and a lot of people are passionate about that. So I want to let the passionate people do that. Um, I don't know. It's, it definitely, uh, it's definitely a thing that students really struggle with. So let me tell you where this topic came from. Okay. Um, <clears throat> my girlfriend is a. Senior resiliency planner for New York City. What does that mean? She is an urban planner, or she works in urban planning, or she studied in school. And she basically makes sure that our cities are going to be as much as possible future proofed for climate change. Because whether you're a naysayer or not, if you are, I don't want to talk to you. (laughs) But it's going to happen. It's happening now. And it's the type of thing where you just have a lot of issues that stem from this. And I've been coming home. And it's being like, I want to do more meaningful things. What am I doing? Like, I need to figure out. Because another thing is I'm turning 30 in three weeks. So all of a sudden you start okay. thinking about your I life. See. I see what, what this, you've been doing. I see where this topic really is coming from. I see. I mean, it, it is. Because now if, before I used to, just, people would ask me interviews, what do you want to design? And I would say anything. I just like design. Right. And now all of a sudden, for some weird reason, like a switch turned over. And now it's like, I need a little more than just because I can do it. Right. And she said to me, she's like, Reed, you teach at Parsons. You have an entire opportunity to go in front of these kids, expose them to whatever types of problems you want, and then you can help mold them. Like you can, um, you can still teach a class on sketching and portfolio building or whatever it is you're doing, but you can weave in there other things that are outside of just sketching. So I took that and I realized, okay, I'm doing an ideation workshop this week. This is when James is at my class. And I want to bring in some examples because every week I have them bring in examples of next week's topic for us to discuss in the beginning. So I don't tell them what the topic is outside of what the name of it is. So next week is uh, concept sketching. So I don't tell them what a good concept sketch is. They have to go out on the internet, find three examples, print them out, and then we pin them all up in the first 30 minutes. We all go around and I make every person get up in front of class and talk about why they picked it, what was successful. Mm. That way, before they even start learning how to do it, they have seen 45 examples of whatever it is for each class. That's cool. I ha- wait, I have a question. How many sketches do you make them do? Uh, this last week was ideation sketching. So they had to come in with 10 pages, minimum three concepts per page of their concept. Oh, because, just, okay, so 30 concepts total? So 30 concepts this week. Because the way I frame my class is, I was always annoyed when I was a student where, or I guess I was more annoyed after I finished the class and I needed to make a portfolio where you end up with a pastel hockey skate and then an illustrator hockey glove and then you have a cell phone you did in um, Photoshop and like that's where you get right, the stereotypical right. sketch section in right, your portfolio. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what I do is I make them pick a topic that they don't know this or they do, they will now that it's also I coordinate with their studio professor. So it's their final project for this semester. And they have to pick a, this semester doing a hand tool. So every lesson they're designing around that topic. And then their last project is they have to do a short folio. So they don't have enough to make a real portfolio, but they're learning the beginnings of what a portfolio yeah. should be. I like that. That's a good good way to structure it for sure. So that way like they're lear- doing sketching class 
my biggest thing is killing as many birds with one stone as you possibly can. Yeah. So that's how I do this class. And my tangent goes back to, I was looking into ideation sketching and trying to find examples of people who were thinking about like disaster relief or even small things like how do you make it easier for women to breast pump in public? Or like, how do you make it easier for people to play sports who are paraplegic or like anything that's like a problem that like needs better solutions for even down to like, how do you make a better cart for old ladies going to the grocery store? I've always wanted to do that project. Are you talking about like the carts that push carts? I want, I want to do one of those. These, these are unique to New York though. I know they are (laughs) like in New York, you don't have cars. So people carry things. Mm -hmm. And if you want to carry a lot of stuff, you buy this little folding cart and it's, right. kind of, it's kind of like it's kind of like rolling luggage, but it has big wheels and it's just wire. And like, there's always like a rickety box. wheel, and it's always like kind of falling apart. Yeah. And like the handles always slid down to yeah. one side. Like it's got to be redone. But as I was that'd looking, be a, that'd be a good design project to redo one of those things. That's what I want to do. We should do a joint brief and put it out there and see what happens. Because yeah. I want to, I want to do it. And I think it'd be fun. Yeah. There's no money in it probably, but it could be a cool idea just to mess with. Um, but I'm looking for examples of ideation on these topics, and I searched for hours, and I found nothing. Wait, you didn't find you didn't find anything around like like water filtration or like, really? Okay. Maybe I was looking in the wrong places. I searched um, Pinterest, Behance, and Coraflot. Do you think it's because it's not not sexy? It, that's what I wanted to get to. It's yeah. like I feel like people want they start design. I'm making a blanket statement with like grand aspirations. And then they see everyone's doing sexy stuff. And especially with Instagram and everything, everyone's just trying to stay afloat and above the curve. So you got to be sexy. And if you're not putting out the cool sketches, what are you doing? You're not going to get a job. I don't know. It's like, I feel like it's this whole thing of like, everyone just gets caught up in this swirl of how do I make the most sexy computer mouse? When it's like, (laughs) does the world need another computer mouse? Oh man, does the world need another? That that really gets the root of the. Problem. I mean, I don't care if you make more stuff. That's not what I'm arguing for. Okay. I just want I just want to talk about why problems that are worth solving, in my opinion, more than another computer mouse, don't get the same level of like attention and sexiness that everything else gets. I yeah. I mean, I definitely understand that. I feel like the answer to your question of why they don't get attention is because. Unfortunately, they don't make as much money, right? Mm-hmm. Like you can't run a business off of. Like you, I'm not. I'm just again blanket statement. But um, you know, it's hard to run a business off of like uh, water filtration pods for people in in third world countries. Mm-hmm. You know, it's much more of a nonprofit donation based thing. Um, I don't know. I the one thing that I always struggle with the whole, especially students like being you know they they get really stressed out about this topic right like mm-hmm. they're in school they want to save the world and all they see when they graduate is like plastic stuff and that obviously causes a lot of anxiety and stress for these students and even designers i'm almost like 30 us, and i'm stressed right, out about it right um and uh the thing i always get back to is like you have to start somewhere right like you have to have the freedom the capital to be able to tackle these problems like no one is going to go out there and tackle these things alone like you have to build something that that sustains that thing like it's it takes a long time right i don't know i see that but i also feel like that's a lazy crutch we all fall back on to a certain degree because at my office um three designers named kyle maya and rosanna Actually, Rosanna's a strategist, Maya's a graphic designer or visual designer, and Kyle's an industrial designer. And they're all super talented. In their free time, they went out of their way and made this like 100-page document of every cool, sustainable material you could ever think of. And then they put it into a very digestible presentation that we can start using to educate ourselves so that way we can put it in front of clients and then so this is a in-house document though in-house document i wouldn't i wouldn't say it's gonna be there forever like maybe it'll go on the website or something but cool it was really cool like we have a staff meeting every tuesday and i saw it and that was like basically my girlfriend said to me she's like i don't want to hear you talk anymore unless you're going to walk the walk and i'm like fuck I am totally talking the talk about wanting to do these things, but not doing anything for it. And then I thought about them and I was like, this is something that designers can do. It's just 
you're right. You don't get paid for it, which is definitely a big like hurdle. But also, it's just us having the time and interest to go out and educate ourselves about it to a certain degree. I think we can get more in there. It doesn't have to be, like you said, like saving the entire world. Yeah. But you can make incremental change just by educating yourself. Yeah. I, I definitely like that aspect of it. Like, I think what you're saying is right, where it does need to be those baby steps because that's, that's where people get tripped up. It's like they get out there and... And yeah, like you guys are designing full time for these huge corporations that, you know, arguably aren't making their products out of like sustainable materials or, or, you know, pushing them to third world countries or whatever it is. But in your free time, you're taking that baby step of like, oh, hey, here's a little bit more. Like, here's Mm -hmm. a little gift that I can give back to the world. Yeah. I also I also want to touch on like the fact of, you know, we always talk about like the save the world type of thing of like when, when you think about like third world countries or, you know, sustainable sustainability and like that, that's the kind of idea like this, I don't know. I don't know what you would call it. Like social movement of save the world type of type of design. That's the kind of thing you think of. Um, but I also want to maybe touch on the fact that like just general innovation. I mean, I think about like the iPhone, mm-hmm has quote unquote saved the world but also caused certainly a lot of other issues yeah but i i you know it's like what's the net outcome right like you can always look at the bad and you can always find the bad in anything oh i'm a pessimist for sure (laughs) i'm from new jersey in new york like i don't know i can't help it it's how i thrive on things (laughs) um but i don't know i feel like people always weigh the bad more than the good well, like if you think about the all the bad that's happened with the I don't know the smartphone age versus all the good that's happened, I don't know what what is that? How does well, that... that's a whole topic. I mean, I think a big thing is evolutionarily people are wired to remember bad things because if you remember a good thing in the wild, okay, right. But if you remember a bad thing, you won't do it again. You'll live longer. Right. That's... And also the media and fear mongering and other things, but um. I don't know. I think it's just something that I wish. I don't know. I have so many thoughts on this topic. Do you th- do you feel like the Instagram um, Instagram ecosystem of sharing these sexy sketches and sexy renders of cool products contributes to this problem? Hmm. I think what everyone is putting out there is what is sexy. Yeah. I mean, I don't really. I haven't done any of the render weekly or sketch wars i've never gotten into that stuff because i was like i want to do this just because i want to i don't want it to be like a competition thing so maybe they've done this and if they have correct me if i'm wrong but like why don't why aren't there more things of like design um a cooler that helps transport hearts to hospitals or something i don't know like why does it always have to be make a jet ski (laughs) make something cool like make something that more wealthy people can buy well okay i (laughs) I do, I do believe they, uh, what, uh, I don't know if, I can't recall Render, I'm sure they, I'm sure Render Weekly or Weekly Design Challenge have done some of those projects before. Um, like, I think, I'm pretty sure, like, Weekly Design Challenge did, like, a prosthetic challenge one time. That's a whole different thing. I can't stand those projects. What, prosthetic projects? So many. What? So we, many. We're in here, we're, we're in here talking about saving But the that's world. not a thing anymore, because those projects are complete, complete fantasy all the time. Everyone's like, yeah, I spent weeks, um interviewing people and like you just made of it's basically taking the fancy design and giving it the guise of something people need whereas like i totally believe it's something you need but if you're gonna do that project fuck sitting there and designing the coolest looking like appendage for swimming go and work with engineering department and make one that actually looks cool it actually works like that's the part that drives me crazy about prosthetics is like it just turns into another car shaping exercise but with the guise of it's like good for somebody and it'll never get made. It's never going to be a thing. Or it could be generative design prosthetic. I mean, you know, those ones. Yeah, Paul Sohi <laughs> makes some, make some generative design limbs. Um, That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I don't want to shit on those projects. It's just also being an interim coordinator for so many years, so many prosthetics. I've seen so many of them and it's just like, I don't know. I love, I love it when I see someone pick a project that needs to be solved. That's, tiny or random like i don't think i started off by saying huge things and i wish i had backtracked that to be smaller like it doesn't need to be the biggest thing that we want to like solve world hunger but like 
you can solve things that are super tiny. Like right now, um, my girlfriend was looking at buying property in Newark for um, an enterprise she's trying to do. And Newark, you know that their water is as bad as Flint, Michigan right now? They just had a Why? huge thing where their corruption, no one took care of the pipes, and now they have high enough levels where you can't drink drinking water. Is Newark. it lead? I think it's lead. You can't drink it. You can't drink water in Newark hmm. for the next three years until they redo all the pipes. So you could easily do a pro- project of like, how do you give people who are actually like urban people who like aren't just some far off person in a foreign country, these people need drinking water. Like you could do a cool project just around that. Like there is literally a design school in Newark, New Jersey. I hope that they are doing some cool briefs around that. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't necessarily... I feel like I definitely resonate with the fact of like solving the smaller problems. That's what I most enjoy is like, Hey, you know, the client comes with you a brief Mm -hmm. and like, there's some sort of like way to improve upon the product. Yeah. But I don't know. I I feel like the thing is is that students don't necessarily, or maybe designers in general. I mean, what is it about the smaller problems that don't feel like they're contributing to the world? Like, is it just because mm-hmm. they're small or? I don't know. I mean, I think one of the times I felt most satisfied was when I was working at Smart Design. Not that I don't currently feel satisfied. It's just different types of satisf- satisfaction. Because when I was a, a student, you learn all about OXO and how it was founded on universal design, made for people with arthritis, and how you can design for someone who has a disability and make it better for everyone. Right. And that was something that I got really excited about. And working for OXO, it was that actual innovation. Like I worked with my good friend, Heidi um, Farrell, Farrell, sorry, I always say her last name wrong. And we did this like mandolin where a problem is mandolins usually pivot from the back. So when you slice Wait, a potato. Mandolin is a. Sorry, a mandolin <laughs> is, I can get very excited about um, hand tools. A mandolin is a object that has a blade in it and two planes. And when you slide a vegetable or a piece of fruit over, it slices it. So it's basically a way to super fast slice vegetables or produce into the same size over and over again right, right. without having to use a knife. So those super dangerous. So how we had designed the guard to make it safe. Right. And then also they pivot in the back. So when you slice something, it makes them wedges. So when you get to like the small sizes, if you put it in the oven, it actually cuts the end off. So like a potato would be burnt on one end and not on their side because they're not even thickness. Mm -hmm. So we designed this nautilus shape mechanism that uses gravity and these two little um, pivot slide arms in the side. So that way, it was the first mandolin that wasn't a tabletop mandolin that had parallel bed. So now, and we also did it where it did half millimeter increments. So you can get insanely precise and then we designed this new guard, which was concave and had teeth in it because the other ones are flat and had a few like teeth on it. Yeah. And when you did, why would you have a flat thing with teeth on it for a round object? You get like three teeth. And it's so dangerous. I sliced the top of my finger off in that project because you can just very quickly go down to the bottom of a potato and not realize it. But like stuff like that, small thing, not the end of the world saving, but like it felt good. Like it was an, a legitimate improvement on a product. Oh, okay. So I feel like I'm starting to get a grasp on your your thing now. Like because this man, this mandolin thing, mm-hmm. n- first of all, no one will probably notice. They'll probably just buy the thing and be like, oh, yeah, it works great. Only like a chef would know. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, my God, they're perfectly, <laughs> perfectly symmetrical. Um, and, you know, I feel like we started off talking about this idea of, well, I go to work every day and I design these, you know, X product, X toaster, X, you know, OXO, whatever it is. Um, and it doesn't feel like it's saving the world. But would you qualify some simple problem like that, like saving the world? That's why I said I wish I had backtracked my original statement where I think I've actually built it up in my head a little bit too much. And so we kind of got deeper into this conversation of thinking huge things we have to solve. And you're right. It's a little challenge or it's very challenging for an individual to do change in that level. So I think it's completely acceptable to do anything that legitimately improves something, not just makes a different style, gives a different feeling right. makes so and makes a new market want something. Okay. Like, so if like you, if you're just like skinning, like, like skinning products in industrial mm-hmm. design means like you take the inside and you just put a new surface on it. Yeah. Like you put a new detail or whatever. CMF. But figuring out a way in which you can legitimately make it better. I think that's like the bare minimum of satisfaction for me. I, if you can get higher than that, that's where I start like 
dreaming about my ideas and like waking up early just to get to work like that's where i get excited about stuff do you think that i don't know if i do this or not but i'm thinking back on some of the projects i've done especially like pet products and things where um you know i'll take a brief and like some of the products i've done i recently um i was just looking on instagram and my friend posted a video of his dog playing with one of the, one of my products and it is a uh it's a a foam ball wrapped in um nylon i actually have it here let me grab it oh man it's going behind the curtain oh yeah we got curtains you're like the the professor from wizard of oz or whatever it's called yeah i installed curtains so i i hope the reverb is a little bit better um but it's a toy for chuck it it's a foam ball it has this nylon outer shell with a rubber thing and then also it, it saves has, the world. <laughs> it also saves the world, right? It has water filtration. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It also has a rope on it that wraps around the ball. Like this. There you go. So I don't know. What do you think, Reed? Does this does this qualify? I think it depends on like was there a need of people losing their balls all the time when they're out with their dogs or like I mean I I think we're I think I've kind of muddied the water a little bit of like there is enjoyable design, right. there is novel innovation, and then there is super social facing design. Right. Yeah, I'm not trying to like put you in a corner. But I mean I do but... agree. I like I mean, I like the fact that that is a new novel way to approach something. And I think that is much more acceptable to me than if you had a company that said, all right, our competitor is making this. We want to be in that market. How do we make another one? Right. So like you came up with a new idea. So that is something that I think is bare minimum, like excitable, like, okay, we're doing something new. It's never happened before. And it's going to make some dog owner happy. Like that's right. cool. I right. like that type of stuff. I mean, that's, that's always what I strive for with my designs. And, and maybe that's why I don't feel as I guess worried about the whole save the world thing because i do feel like every project i take on i try to add that extra little like piece of functionality or, or piece that just improves it just a little bit i mean it even goes yeah. okay i'll even say this i mean even, me. even 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 goes back to um you know when i when i talked to Dieter rams there's the episode uh, i don't know i don't know the number you can look it up but um i think he he his what is it saying less but better something like that less but better um oh man i'm i'm messing this up but uh when i talked to him this lady com came up and i'll tell the story again if you haven't heard it but um this lady came up and was like Tita rams Tita rams did you say less but better or less and better or something like that right and you know she clearly wasn't as as big of a fan as i was but Tita rams was like no no it's less but just a little bit better. He added just a, a little bit, which made mm -hmm. an impact because it, it, I mean, obviously it's Dieter Rams, but um, it made an impact because it, it, I guess it just like gave, gave me a little bit of relief, right? It's like, hmm. hey, these, these things take time. You just need to make it a little bit better. Like yeah. just try a little bit. I don't know if that helps or not. <laughs> no, I mean this making me rethink. We my are whole we are giving all of our lens, listeners a, a good bit of anxiety about this topic. I'm sure. <laughs> I don't think anyone should feel anxious about it. I think it's just um, an education thing where it's like people should expose themselves to design outside their comfort zone, and I think that's actually getting into whole new topics. Maybe I should keep that can of worms closed. <laughs> but honestly, I think it's just. How do you design? I, I, let's let me make it about um, my perspective, so that way I'm not making everyone else anxious. Right. The way I think about it is, what is a topic that gets me out of the morning, gets me up in the morning, because I feel like I have made humanity better. Because the way I really see this is, honestly, the problems that are facing humanity right now are going nowhere. They're getting worse. Like, we're going to have scarcity in water. We're going to have scarcity in land. Food is going to be hard to come by in, like, 50 years. And climate change is making all this worse. So it's like, why spend all your time making things a little better? But at the same time, it's like the reality, that's all you probably can do. Because we are an individual person or a group. And you're right. 
money. It comes down to a lot of this and right. it makes it challenging. I don't know. I think, I think I wanted to come on here as a therapy session a little bit too, like to help me That's figure fine. this out. That's like, fine. Welcome. It's like, what is everyone get on the discord and we'll talk <laughs> about this and we can say how we feel, but it's just like, how do you do something when it feels like, I don't know, there's all this stuff that's looming that needs right. thought. And I believe that creative people have so much ability to tackle big problems because I've worked with super corporate people. They don't like thinking outside their lane. Right. And we are completely fine or at least learn to be completely fine. We live in ambiguity. Yeah. yeah. So how do you take that, harness it and come up with cool solutions to things? And I think that's what gets me excited about working with students is like no one's told them no yet. So they still have that unbridled enthusiasm to just take on huge things that are way bigger than they can ever possibly swallow. Right. Or things that are medium sized. Like last year, I judged the IDSA um, entrance from Parsons. And one of the girls who's super talented had a project that was redesigning barriers outside of abortion clinics. And I thought that was a really what cool What do you mean barriers? Topic. Like the barriers like ball- they put... The bear, it got, the, right now they basically put those big rotomolded molded James's dad might actually make them. Oh, his, like ro- roadside barriers. Right? Yeah, they put those like the, outside. The, the orange ones. To keep ones, yeah. protesters from women who need to go to these clinics. Okay. And it's, I heard that and I was like, holy shit, I never thought about that. But that's a real interesting project. Like, Right. I, wait, so they finished the project and they made them? I mean, it was a student project, so they didn't actually okay. make it. But like the fact that students still are willing to bite more than they can chew, take on a cool, meaty topic... I guess maybe it's just the advantage of being a student. You have time to do that stuff. Right. But I see something like that and I'm like, holy crap, that's like something that I want to help out with. That's like a cool project. Right. Now, did you tell the student that they would never get that manufactured because no one would ever buy those things or there, or the market for those things are so low that it could, it would have to be self-funded by something else, someone else. No, I didn't. Well, we actually ended up picking that person for the year and we said, we believe in your ideas. Now you have two weeks to go back and take them a level higher. So it's like, that was an instance where we could have picked someone who had really solid design work and it was very solid work, but we chose someone who we thought chose more worthy topics, but maybe needed a little push to get them to like that sexy level, Mm. which is another example Mm. of like great idea, but the execution is like, it's like, I feel like people get so mired down with strategy and overthinking these things that it turns into a thesis presentation. Yeah. And that's not good. No one wants to listen to that. So why can't you take the quickness of a mouse design and put that towards a problem like that? Obviously the, the other problem has so much more to think about. But you can still probably get like sixty percent of the way there. I mean, you could definitely do. Quickly. You could definitely do some sexy renders of the of the barriers for sure. Yeah, I mean, you can think of, and there's so many. Like, I was sitting there, and all I wanted to do is tell her, like, "Oh my god, try it like this way or that way or this way or do this and this." And obviously, you can't because right. it's not your project, and it's their job to learn. It was a student situation, but like, just seeing stuff like that is what gets me going. Of like. Like, I didn't even think about this. And this is so cool. And, like, now there's so many things to do. And, like, I want to get off my ass and, like, bike to every clinic in the city and interview everyone and talk to these things and figure out what the problems are. And, like, how do we make this better? And, like, there's so many ways you can make cool things from problems that are, like, all around you. You don't even notice them. Yeah. No, I I definitely understand. I feel like there does need to be the balance, though, of, like, you know, I don't know if it's it's the professor or, or who it is. But, like, hey, like... Let's take your idea and now let's inject it into the business. Like let's mm-hmm. inject it into the real world and see how that stands up from a business standpoint. Or uh, or it could just be some sort of passion project that is, mm-hmm. you know, donated from a nonprofit or whatever it is. It's it's just there does need to be that realization like, hey, you know, I want I know you want to like, you know, send this new water filtration thing to Africa or whatever, but like here's the I don't know. Here's the math. I don't no? know. I don't. I don't have anything to support. I'm about to say. I just feel like Gen Z and all these people are so resourceful that, and they don't think in the same box that. Are we you do. on TikTok? What TikTok? What's that? It's the new Gen Z thing. No, I don't know the stuff. Oh, man, you gotta get on it, man. I have one social platform, and it's Instagram, and it's the only one I've ever had, and it's the only one I ever will have. Or maybe not ever, but no, I don't you'll know. be you'll be on TikTok. Just wait. I don't know. 
I don't, I don't want, like, I don't even. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Did you? That's a whole other, now you're stressing me out. <laughs> now I'm stressed out. Um, no, so yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think the, the, the group under us is certainly more, I don't know, ambitious than we are, or maybe not ambitious, but I think they're scrappier to a certain degree. Scrappier. You think so? I think they are, or maybe it's more resourceful. Like, I don't know. I'm also just putting a lot of faith in the next generation because I feel like our generation, especially the ones before us, fuck things up so bad that I just like really want the next generation. Like all the stuff that's going on, there's so many good stories of people like grassroots movements. Like I give them faith. You think this happens though over and over and probably in... <laughs> I'm also almost 30. So I get to complain about the younger generations now. Exactly. Exactly. But I'm going to give, I'm giving cycle. them a credit. I'm giving them credit though. I'm going the opposite directions. I'm not yep. like these younger people. <laughs> They're terrible. I'm like, I love you and I give you faith and you might listen to terrible music and love Post Malone, but like, you know, it's okay. What is the other, what's the Miley Cyrus, not, not Miley Cyrus, what's the other girl? The, I need a little more information than that. Uh, the bad boy girl. Uh, bad, bad girl? Uh, this conversation is like the blind leading the blind right now. You don't even watch TV. I don't know music. I downloaded TikTok the other day. I gotta tell you, it's an interesting app. <laughs> is that where you learn about the other girl or her no, this the, mystery singer? you know it's it's the one pop song i forget her name it's okay i don't know i've been i've been still listening to i'm about to get grilled on the discord so, so let's go let's see what's everyone talking about <laughs> i'm sure they're just like nick it's this it's such and such person i've been listening to rich brian he's been my person on repeat recently um but yeah i don't know like, like just to close out the conversation i think that obviously the whole save the world thing is a it, it does give a lot of um I think a lot of people do struggle with it and certainly designers of all age struggle with it. I don't, I don't know if we have a really a good solution, but all I have to say is like these things take baby steps. You have to build something brick by brick. I think you're also thinking about it from someone in the industry's perspective yeah. and some, so the thing that currently outside of my regular job gets me excited in the morning is teaching. So I, still believe you need to push your students to solve these types of problems because think about it like if you start wide you can only get more narrow as you go but if you start narrow then like you're just going to be narrow forever like if you if you're in school and you're just making like another behringer mixer then you've never gone to topics that are bigger than the mixer like what is the larger thing so i feel like at school you need to be exposed to big problems and then you can always get smaller and go to little ones. Yeah. But like, if you don't ever see a big problem and you're never going to get paid to do it later or might not ever get paid, then you miss that entire boat altogether. I think that's great advice as well, Reed. That's definitely, definitely... Pick some big stuff. Don't be don't be afraid to get overwhelmed because at least you're not going to get fired. And pick some little stuff too because that'll help you get a job. <laughs> no, pick the big thing, but then find the little thing within that big thing that you can actually do. There we go. That's it. Perfect. There we go. Um, should we answer some questions? If they're good questions. Yeah. Okay. So we had a question come in from Design Corey, and they ask, Hey, Nick and Reed, for personal projects and paid gigs alike, I find it difficult. Oh, also, pause. If you have questions yourself, send it into minordetailspodcast at gmail.com. We also have a voicemail, and that is 1-646-494-4011. If you'd like to leave a voicemail, we'll play it on the podcast. Um, but back to Corey's question. For personal projects and peg, paid gigs alike, I find it difficult to feel like a design is truly done. I tend to be critical of my work, even when it's received well. Consequently, I never really finish my personal projects, and I finish paid jobs feeling like I could have done better. Do you guys struggle with this? What are some projects you feel proud of, and what is it that makes a project feel complete? Huh. That's a good question. I mean, it's it's definitely... I feel like a a thing that happens earlier on in your career, in my opinion. I definitely felt like when I was in school, there was projects where it never really felt finished. Mm -hmm. I feel it now. I, I'm I'm a bit more confident when it's finished, but I'm not. I'm not quite sure what that. There's no one telling you like, "Hey, it's done." Mm -hmm. Oh, sometimes there are. <laughs> well, hey, <laughs> it's due right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I feel like I see. It depends on what project it is. Like if it's that Lego castle, I redid it over and over again until I felt happy. But even the day I was photographing it, I was anxious because I was like, oh, I wanted to fix like 800 other things on here. But 
there's something we said to just sit down, shut up, and do it because no one else in the world is going to tell that 2% that it could have been different. It only is going to be noticeable to you. So I think getting things out there is the most important thing you can do for personal projects. Um, but for work projects, honestly, I feel like work long enough and you'll get to a place where you just kind of instinctually know. And also after a while, it's going to sound like, I don't know, bad, but like, you know what good enough is and what the right answer is because it depends on who your client is and you have to figure out how to work smart and efficient where it's like, if you beat yourself up on every single project, you're never going to leave your office and your work will probably only be like a small percentage better than it would have been if you had just stopped when you started questioning yourself that. Right. Like the difference between great and perfect is so like the time to get from great to perfect is, is so intense that mm-hmm. it's really not worth it. Yeah. Right. Is that what you're kind of saying? More or less. Where it's like, if you can get to perfect, but also like, I've also stopped using the word perfect. I call myself a recovering perfectionist. <laughs> um, and it's just a word that's toxic and this makes you feel like you're inadequate all the time. Right. And there's no such thing as perfection. Like there is a happy client, a happy boss, a happy yourself, and hopefully a happy customer. And if you can get those things, it doesn't matter if it's perfect. It doesn't matter if it's ugly to you because ultimately the thing we need to think about is is the customer going to be happy yeah i definitely i I definitely uh agree with your statement around the the idea that you are the only one who knows the flaws right like maybe you designed this thing and you wanted it to have like a bigger fillet on this one Mm -hmm. side or or whatever it is like uh, one or two millimeters or some dimension this way or that way and for whatever reason, it couldn't manufacture it that way. And there's like, it's slightly off. Yeah. But everyone who sees that thing sees it as it is. It, they see it as the final product. Mm-hmm. And you just need to accept that fact and own it. And this actually kind of goes back to some of our, our old topics of like, do do the details matter? <laughs> this podcast is called Minor Details. <laughs> do the details even matter? Um, no, it's like, I, I think about a lot of the great designs out there. You even think about, I don't know, like, I don't know, the Eames chair, whatever it is, right? Like, mm-hmm. think about a great design. Let's just think about the, all the details that went wrong in that design. Because I'm sure that, like, Charles and Ray Eames ha- wanted some, like, screw detail to be, like, different. Mm-hmm. And the manufacturer was like, oh, hey, we can't really do this because we only have these types of screws. And we just got to use it anyways. Yeah. And they are probably like, dang it, it ruined the design. <clears throat> yeah. But when you look back on it, it's like... You need to zoom out and realize that it's it's finished because it's finished in a way. I don't know if that makes sense or not. But. That's where it kind of becomes an art form to a certain degree because there's groupthink up until the end. And at the end, when you have too many opinions, that's when you can start feeling like it's never finished because everyone's going to have an opinion and you're always going to get in a situation where people talk just to say something. And that's what drives me nuts where it's like when it gets down to like the teeniest little bits of a product. Yeah. And someone's like, well, what if you nudge it that way? Or what if its radius is bigger? Or what if this goes here? Sometimes you just got to be like, all right, everyone shut up. And I'm going to finish this. And if you like it, tell me. If you have a huge problem with this, we'll revisit it. Yeah. But if not, it's like, sometimes you just got to finish it. Like, yeah. That's why at our lead and like, we'll start projects with like six designers and we'll all ideate. And then usually one person takes it all the way through. And then a creative director pokes in the meetings once in a while. Yeah. So that's like... You need that. I definitely like the fact that one person takes it all the way through. I think that there there are those scenarios where maybe there's a couple designers. And this happens in school much more than it does in real life, I think. I don't know. I'm not super up to date on my experience. I mean, obviously, you've worked at more studios than I have. But um, I feel like when one designer takes kind of control and, and sees out the vision of whatever kind of beginning concept it was, it does feel more cohesive. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it's more cohesive. And it's also when you have something that you're trying to finish and you know it inside, outside, upside down, backwards. Right. Everyone else is going to come in and throw their two cents in. And all, I feel like, at least for me, I find myself being like the negative Nancy in the room because I know why all those ideas won't work. Right. Because you've already gone through them. And it's like, I'm like, yes, that is a great idea. I thought about this like a week ago, but yes, it's a great (laughs) idea. But it's like, you need to just have that common thread 
And if you're having this problem, Design Corey, just trust in yourself. If you real, I think the thing is, if you think it's wrong, seek advice out. Don't just like take everyone's advice all at once. Like be selective with it because That's true. it can be very overwhelming. That's for, true. Especially at the end of a project when you're like, oh my God, I need to put this in the real world and it's going to have my name attached to it. It gets very precious and it can be kind of scary. Yeah, I think it, I think it, I also think it just takes time to kind of understand when that stopping point is. Mm-hmm. Like if you're a student, like you don't really know, but as you make more products, make more designs, you kind of get the, the feeling of when it's done. Yeah. And also there's constraints too. Like, Hey, you got to make it this size. You got to make it this dur- durable. And like, mm-hmm. there's a lot more constraints in the real world where you have to kind of abide by those constraints. Sometimes it's like a puzzle. Like sometimes it, it literally is. There's one design around your constraints. Um, mm-hmm. But good question, Corey. Yes, uh, thanks, thanks for coming in. Um, quick question. And uh, then we'll get to our shout out. But uh, this one comes from Daniel. And they say, I was curious how you guys organize your and name your files. I thought this was just fun. Like they're talking about like our computer files. Okay. So... If you really want to know, yeah. all of you guys should go spam Eric Call. He is a senior wrestle designer I work with. He is the most organized human I've ever met. And I thank him for it because I feel like I change my naming system every time I start a project. And I am very type A, so I don't know why I do this to myself, but it gives me way too much anxiety. And he's very good at learning. He knows his system. And I finally, after being at our lead for two years now, know the general What's guideline. What's the system? Yeah. It's year month date so it's like 1909 16 all just consecutive numbers okay so it's like one nine one six one one nine oh nine one six okay so it's six numbers so that way you can always search for anything okay based off of the numbers it always brings up if you know like oh i did it in this year everything from that year comes right okay got it go work backwards from there get big to small um and then we have a template for our server where it's like phase one and then it's underscore 2d underscore 3d underscore client underscore presentation blah 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 blah, all different things okay and then all the subfolders are already in there so all you have to do is go copy paste it for every new project and if you don't need a folder you just delete it but it's really nice just to make a master folder on your computer of all your folders that way whenever you start a new project you just copy paste it and they're all the same Give yourself a single rule of like, okay, date, and then name, and then V, blah, 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 blah. That okay. way, at least every day you're updating it. Right. And then always have an archive folder. So that way, every, every after the day, after two days gone by, your folder, your stuff always goes in the archive. So it's only the most recent files. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you, don't, you don't get like a whole like thing that you're trying to search for, through for your mm-hmm. day-to-day uh, files. Um, yeah, I like that. Also, back up your files. That's a good thing to do. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I don't have a system. <laughs> now you do. <laughs> now I do. Um, yeah, I, I usually just type the name of whatever I'm working on. I don't know if it's uppercase. I don't know if it's lowercase. I just randomly type it out. And then I always put a number at the end. So, like, it always just starts with one, and then it just goes until I finish. So, What's the highest number you've gotten to? Uh, Like 50-something. Wow. Um, so yeah, like that would be like 50 revisions on a, on a 3d model, um, which is quite a lot. I would say most of my files only get up to like 16 or seven, like in the, in the teens, sometimes in the twenties, it it depends on the project. If it's a pretty complex project, it can get higher. Mm -hmm. Um, You know what I've started doing recently, which is bad. What's that? I'll do like version, like, oh, not like 1909.15 V1. I don't put dates. I, it's just the it's like chuck it ball one and then i say save as two that's because you don't have to have co-workers finding your phone <laughs> right there. exactly but oh my god it's the worst thing ever when you need something and someone's not around and you just you know the file exists yeah, yeah. you just can't find it oh man that's that's a uh, blood boiling inducing but um the worst thing i've been doing recently is like i'll do like whatever the date is v4 and then I'll say V4.5, 
And then I'll be like, oh, this is a cool iteration, V4.75. Oh, no. And then 0. Wait. 0.875. And then I keep splitting it. That's why That's why it should just be whole numbers. You should just go five, four to five to six to seven. To it's eight. like the piece of cake at the office where everyone keeps <laughs> cutting it in half until why, it's like one si- Because no one wants to put the plate away. That's what it is. I thought it was people just... Also, you know what I hate? When people cut a donut in half. I would hate it. Whenever, I'd eat all my food. Yeah, like why would you cut a donut? Like you're already eating a donut. Just eat the whole thing. What if it's a jelly donut that comes out and I'm just like, like that's ruined what, the whole thing. That's what I'm saying. Oh. Come on, like. All right, um, we're getting off topic. Yeah, now. thanks for sending that in, Daniel. Uh, we do have a shout out of the week, and Reed, you picked this person or this this studio. I studio. did. So yeah, it's a uh, catapult design. Catapult spelled design. The way in which it sounds like it should be spelled. And they are a design firm that I, I think I found them at IDSA conference like years ago. And the reason I brought them up is because they are the only design firm that I know of other than IDO.org, but they're technically part of IDO, so different. So the only standalone design firm that does all social good projects. So if you go to their website, their homepage, ideation sketching on social good. Exactly what I needed for my class at Parsons, but couldn't find. So check them out. Uh, I don't know anyone there. I just think they do good work, and I wish more people like them existed. Yeah, we'll put the we'll put a link in the the website and description and everything. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Again, um, you know, subscribe to iTunes, Apple Play, or uh, Google Play, um, Spotify, YouTube. Hopefully, we get the YouTube video. I try to. Re- I, James is not here, so we're we're trying to record the the YouTube video. I'm pretty sure it'll work. Um, and uh also give us five stars on apple podcast because we're moving up in the ranks oh yeah i think we're on like 40 in uh the design section of apple podcast is 99 percent visible number one mm, probably i'm not sure i haven't checked them all um but yeah it, it really helps out like if you can't support the podcast like five stars and a quick review would really help it out you gotta get a roman mars on your podcast <laughs> i i think we can get kanye west what Kanye That's West a bold statement or Kareem Rashid and I Kanye likes design he was at a what didn't he didn't he go to design school or something yeah like stood on the table and yeah, scared yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. um I, I'm sure we can get in there all right okay um I'm gonna hold you to that <laughs> can I be the guest lecturer on that one <laughs> yeah, that needs to be you and me who know nothing about <laughs> rap music I know some rap music you know some I feel like James is more equipped to have that interview. James is a music guru for sure. Yes, he's good at that. Um but yeah, as always you can find me at Nick P. Baker. And I'm at Reed Schlegel. We both have easy ones. This yeah. is our names. Yeah, yeah. Um and uh yeah, we'll see you guys later. Peace out. Thank you everybody. Bye.